Our story thus far. As a young girl abroad, Billy is deceived by her first true love and goes to New York where she becomes a secretary for Ellis Eichhorn, one of the world's richest men. They are married soon after. Meanwhile, Spider Elliot and Valentine O'Neill are getting their first taste of success. Her by landing a job as designer, and he by taking pictures of gorgeous model Melanie Adams, with whom he soon becomes infatuated. Your head forward, okay? Ellis, out of concern for Billy, encourages her. Keep busy with something you, you enjoy, something you're good at. Fashion, perhaps. Soon after, he suffers a stroke. Ellis! And they move to California, where he is attended by his male nurse, Jake Cassidy. I'd like to invite you to a party. Returning from the party, Billy is met with the tragic news of her husband's death. Oh, my God! Melanie, increasingly dependent on Harriet Toppingham, deserts Spider for the lure of Hollywood. Billy decides to follow Ellis's advice and open scruples and exclusive fashion center. In New York, searching for designs. This is more like it here. Look at this. She is impressed by Valentine's originals and offers her and Spider a position at Scruples. Meanwhile, Billy is blackmailed by Jake Cassidy. That night, someone altered my dream. Someone took pictures of me. I was set up, Jake. And it had to be you. In Khan, Billy has a whirlwind romance with Vito Orsini, a director who's having trouble getting Kurt Arvey to finance his next picture. You're a good director, but you work slow. I love you, Vito Orsini. I'm crazy about you, Billy Icon. Billy learns she is a stockholder in Arvey Studios and secretly <laughs> uses this power to deal with Arvey. Billy, say no more. It's Vito's picture all the way. Jake, caught stealing from a friend. Put it back, Jake. Now. Murders her in a blind rage. Spider goes to see Melanie. Make love to me, Spider. It's been so long. Billy's lawyer, Josh, proposes to Valentine. Decided to ask Joanne for a divorce. A divorce? And Vito gets the go-ahead to shoot his film. First, you marry me. Oh, Vito. <laughs> but soon, Billy is questioned by the police. Do you uh, recognize this person? Yes, his name is Jay Cassidy. No matter what Cassidy has done, I'm sure it's got nothing at all to do with you. In a moment, the conclusion of Scruples. Mrs. Eichhorn's wedding that isn't quite right. I think you ought to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Yes? Maggie, it's Spider. Are you decent? Yes. Just a minute. Not decent. I believe that. All right. Thank you. Hail, Spider. Huh? That's one of those Barry Brooks fantasy numbers, isn't it? And farewell. Mm -hmm. You know, Maggie, I have a policy here at Scruples that no customer shall be allowed to purchase anything that does not do justice to her. Bull. You just don't want me to wear white to the wedding, do you? Huh? 
damn Billy. What does she have to be so tall for and so gorgeous? Those long legs and that gorgeous figure. And a zillion dollars. And Vito Orsini besides. And I don't even get a dress I like to wear. It's Billy's wedding. Now, go ahead. Twist the knife a little bit, huh? You think she should be wearing white to the wedding? Hmm? She's a widow, case of bridal license. Anyway, it's off-white. Way off. Listen, I'm, I'm going to cancel our dinner tonight. Do you mind terribly? Of course I do. Uh, Problems? Joanne's Music Center committee meeting's been postponed until after the holidays. So we're having an early dinner at home, just the two of us. I'm going to ask her for a divorce today. Josh. No, no, it's the perfect time. Come on, Val, I love you. I want us to be together. You're so sweet. Hey, the wedding dress is beautiful. Billy, please? Impatient, as usual. I'd like to see it on you. <laughs> That's bad luck. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Let me finish. I'll call you. Maybe we'll make a late celebration of it. A late drink, huh? We'll see. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Look at it. What do you see? Tall? No. No, no, she's not. But that doesn't make any difference. Shoulders. Not bad. Terrific. Neck? Soft. Ew. <laughs> Bust. <laughs> Benevolent. That's quality raw material. This is true. Mm -hmm. It just needs... Uh... What? It's a question of self-image. You see, when we look in a mirror alone, we tend to concentrate on the parts, not the whole. See, we don't see ourselves in relationship to other people. Now, pay attention. Look. Small, right? Well. Super feminine. Ah. Rounded, petite, female. <laughs> but we don't see it. Why? Why? Because the dress is too dramatic. Right? Red? Mm-hmm. Turn around. Yeah. See? Now you're back in the picture. And we focus on you, not on the dress. What do you think? We've never made it together. Probably a conflict of schedule. <laughs> Why don't you just take me out to dinner tonight after my taping? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. And uh, I will wear this red dress to the wedding. I'll get a fit. It's an important scene ending, Don. Go to dinner, Vito. I'll finish up. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll enjoy yourself. Why don't you come with us, Steve? Oh, I don't no, know. no, no, no. No, he wouldn't. Uh, why don't you rough out the revisions of the next draft, and I'll go through them with you when, when I get back. Okay? Have a nice time. It makes me feel so guilty. If you're going to be married to me, darling, there are certain things you have to learn about the picture business. One, you never invite a writer to dinner. They don't give a damn about food. Besides, it gives them an excuse to stop writing. But you treat him like an indentured servant or something. He has no life of his own. He's here from early in the morning until late at night. You let a writer out of your sight, and he'll get on his boat and disappear. It's like letting a dog off a leash. Sid! In less than 48 hours, we're going to be Mr. and Mrs. Vito Orsini. Are you happy? Very. The rewrites are going very well. How was your day, Josh? Fine. Was it really? You're not happy, are you, Josh? Joanne, now that you mention it, 
neither am I. I'm tired of committees. I'm fed up with the Music Center, the Museum of Science and Industry, the Arts Council, the Library of USC. I'm sick of my life. Well, you could go to UCLA, take some courses. That's not enough. You know what you want? A divorce. Yes, Josh, I want a divorce. Does that shock you? Say, I'm somewhere between shock and surprise. I don't want to be cruel. I... If this is hurtful, I don't mean it to be. I'm sorry. But it's, it's a risk I have to take. I understand that. I don't think you do, Josh. There's somebody else. Don't you want to know who it is? Not unless you want to tell me. It's Sandy, the tennis pro. You met him a few days ago. He makes me feel. I hope you don't think I'm a tramp. I don't. We have to talk about the custody of the children. We'll talk about it later. Well done. Medium rare. Pretty good bowl of chili for 15 bucks. <laughs> Should be, yeah. Oh! What was that for? You knew they were coming here, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Any reporter in this town who doesn't have a source in every restaurant... Isn't worth his or her salt. Yeah, you tell me. Right. You've hurt my feelings, you know that? I mean, I thought you wanted me for myself. No, no, I'm just the beard. That's also right. Don't be a spoiled sport now. Where are you going? Strictly business. Yeah, I'll bet. Ah! Don't touch. We'll be back. You're sure I won't be intruding? Certainly not. Scoot over a bit, Billy. Good. So, I want to hear all about mirrors. How's it coming, huh? Fine, fine. We're only a day behind schedule. Of course, we haven't started shooting yet. <laughs> so what else is new, right? How can you be behind if you haven't started yet? <laughs> you better explain it to her, Vito. It's just a trade joke, honey. You wouldn't understand. Hello. Hello. Mm. Spider, come sit by me. You can interpret. <laughs> well, I see you took my advice. My casting advice? You gonna use Dolly Moon for the second lead? It's a terrific idea. Ah, uh, thanks. She's gonna be perfect for the part, don't you think? I've never heard of her. Dolly Moon? Mm-mm. <laughs> A, a Dolly Moon played a small part in a disaster that Vito produced a couple of years ago in Mexico. I don't want to think about it, Maggie. It was not your fault. It was a disaster, darling. Literally, months and months on location in the bowels of Mexico. And I use that word advisedly. <laughs> Tell her. Uh. You remember. Tell her. Tell them what we had to do when they blew up the honey wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Some other time. Yeah. Well, anyway, Dolly Moon, at one terrible point, actually said the classic line. <laughs> Who do you have to sleep with to get off this picture? That's it. Thank you. And who did that turn out to be? Just a joke, honey. Let's get a menu. When are you leaving for Braxton? Monday. You didn't tell me we were going to Braxton. Didn't I? No. We'll be roughing it. The actual location is 40 miles from Braxton. The whole company's going on on Friday to dig in. In case they blow up the honey wagons again? <laughs> Vito, Friday is the day after my wedding. Our wedding. Yes, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Waiter, 
Come on, Maggie, let's go back to the table. I still have $11 worth of chili to choke down. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Spoil, spoil. Ciao, you too. And I will see you in Brafton. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You did that on purpose. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I am a journalist, Spider, a communicator, remember? Right. I have a right to talk. How long have you been a journalist, Maggie? Ten? No, oh, I think it's twelve years. Now you've talked enough. Have you decided? Yes. I'm not hungry. Are you having an affair with her? Who? Maggie McGregor. No. Did you? Billy. Answer my question. No. No, you didn't? No, I won't answer your question. You did. in love with her? I refuse to answer that on the grounds that I may tend to incriminate you. Is that a trade joke, too? She called you darling constantly. Once! Oh, you noticed. It was awfully nice of her to help you pass the picture. You're talking about Dolly Moon? Yes. She worked for me before I had Sid write the part with her in mind. The day Mirrors was announced, her agent phoned me up five times. The receptionist at R&B Studios read the first part of the screenplay and told me that the only possible actress who could play the part was Dolly Moon. Everybody in Hollywood was a casting expert. It makes them feel creative. Well, I suppose everyone in Hollywood knew exactly where you were going for location before I did, too, huh? Perhaps it would be all right with you if I just didn't even go. Well, this stuff is terrific. Sid did a hell of a job. Terrific. I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you I picked a location. I felt like I was in high school, trapped at the lunch table with all the popular girls in the class. So you were envious? No, no. Jealous, yes. Welcome to the club. Look, Billy, I adore you. There's no one in the world I love. No one compares to you. But what troubles me now is a suspicion that maybe Billy Winthrop Eichhorn is afraid. Afraid to commit herself freely to one Vito Filippo Rossini. And if that's true, then perhaps we'd better call this marriage off before it gets serious. No. Good. Then let's stop hurting each other. I don't want to know a thing about the men in your life before you met me. Not one word. Never. And I expect the same consideration about the women in my life before I met you. Let's drop the subject, permanently and forever. And I promise you, I will never give you a reason, not one reason, for you to be jealous of any woman in the world. I love you. Was she good in bed? Rotten. She talked right through the best part. Yes, we're very happy you could be here.
hell of a time of day for a wedding. Is the sun up yet? Billy said it was the only time Vito could spare. He's working on his picture. His picture? My picture. It's my studio. <laughs> for the moment. shows us a little compassion. After all, we are doing the wedding. We're doing a wedding? Well, yeah. I'll just charge it off to Vito's picture. I'm surprised at you. I would have thought you were the type who cried at weddings. Me? Yeah. Never. Wait till hours. <laughs> we are gathered here this morning to unite this man and this woman in matrimony. If there be any man here who has reason why this man and this woman should not be wed, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Forget it, Kurt. It wouldn't do any good. Oh, that traffic. I hope Billy didn't see me. I don't want to spoil anything for her. I don't think you could. Do you, Billy, take this man, Vito, to be your lawful wedded husband? Billy. Yes. Yes, I do. And do you, Vito, take this woman to yes. be your lawful wife? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> mm. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Although perhaps I should make that retroactive. <laughs> Happy for you, Billy. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Vito. Thank you. Congratulations, Vito. I hope you're very happy. Thank you. Billy. 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 Huh? Mm -hmm. That guinea is now co-owner of enough stock to have controlling interest of my studio. If he gets lucky with mirrors. I knew I never should have introduced them. <sighs> if you ever prayed for a picture to bomb, pray now. Kurt, don't be sacrilegious. <gasps> sure. There's no problem. I'll just sell our estate in Holmby Hills and we'll move into a mobile home park. Good luck. Excuse me, honey. Congratulations. Thank you. Vita. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Thank you. I considered not coming after the other night. I, I thought maybe she'd have her nose out of joint. Not a chance. Look at it. It's as pretty as ever. So is yours. Mm. Everyone, the buffet is open. Billy has one of the <laughs> shortest. Let's talk to you a minute. I'm sorry, Mrs. Icorn. It's Orsini, Mrs. Orsini. All right. Um, I stopped at the store. They uh, told me where you were, but they didn't tell me why. I told you I would call you if I heard from Jay Cassidy. Now, I haven't, and I hardly think that my wedding is the place to discuss the subject. So if you'll excuse me. We can do this tomorrow. Your store or mine. I won't be here tomorrow. It won't take long. Come with me. Who catered this thing, Mussolini? Well, you know Vito, he needs his daily pasta fix. <laughs> Vito tells me you may do a TV special on mirrors featuring the producer-director for a change. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of doing actors. <laughs> Ever thought about doing one on a screenwriter? Don't huh? be so frivolous, Sid. <laughs> Val, congratulations. Billy's gown is stunning. Well, that's merely a finger exercise for the next wedding gown she'll design. 
Thank you, Marianne. As for you, Josh, it's bad luck to speak about another wedding, but the one you're attending. Oh, another French custom? Have French, have Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I think Billy feels about Maggie being here. Oh, well, you know what they say, a new groom sleeps clean. <sighs> That's uh, quite a spread. Will you forgive me if I don't ask you to stay? Now, what is it, Lieutenant? Do you uh, recognize this? It's my cape. Where did you get it? It was the only thing Faye Bostwick was wearing when we found a body. It took us a while to trace it through with John Prince in New York. Which only goes to prove that Jake Cassidy is a thief as well as a murderer. Ah, I didn't say he was either. Mrs. Orsini, why do I have the feeling you know more than you're telling me? Are you quite through, Lieutenant? For now. Darling, come on, darling, there's a wedding cake to be cut. All right. Thank God, somebody I don't know. I'm Vito Orsini. Honey, this, this is... Sam! Sam! Sam Bakersman! Oh, I'm glad you could make it. I see you've met the bride and groom. Sam's an old friend of mine from New York, Vito. I hope you don't mind my inviting him to your wedding. Of course not. Excuse us, please. Come on, darling. Mrs. Orsini. Yes? Congratulations. I hope you'll both be very happy. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. That was very decent of you. Uh, Mr. Elliot, Spider Elliot. Ah, uh, Mr. Elliot. If you're a friend, then be a friend. I deal in homicide, not morality. Now, you tell Mrs. Orsini, if she's mixed up with Cassidy, she's playing a dangerous game. Ah, and by the way, the name is Tony. And I see no reason why we can't shoot it by the water. Sam, yeah. if you could give me one good reason. Well, it's not because I like fish. I always stop. Hello. Hi. Where is everyone? Location. I thought this was location. This is the base location. They're out at the shooting location. Oh, well, how do I get there? I don't know. The drivers are all out with the company. Oh, well, could you take me then? Sorry, I'm craft service. Drivers are teamsters, union rules. Hi. Hello. I couldn't help overhearing. Well, no, actually, I could have closed the door. I'm Dolly Moon, the actress person, but I'm sorry I'm signing no autographs this morning. Oh, well, I'm Billy Orsini, the bride person. God, you're ugly. Which means you must be a very beautiful person underneath. Want to visit the location, ugly person? Well, I'd love to, but how do we do that? I brought my own car. Come on. Terrific. You know, I think we're going to be friends. As long as you don't get jealous of all my action. Men can't keep their hands off of me. Mm -hmm. I tell you, the good Lord did me no favors making me so gorgeous. <laughs> Okay. 
This is all new to me. I've never been on a movie location before. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even quite sure what clothes to bring. 